have this vivid memory of sitting in the bathtub one time and just crying. I think I punched my dad once. You're not in charge of me right now. Like, you just won't leave me alone. I had an epidural on my back, so I couldn't move very well. She just wanted me to keep pushing and keep going. Everybody had one. Like, if you didn't have one, you were looked down upon. This is a show where teenagers share their experiences growing up in today's world. I'm your host, Dr. RJ, and this is A Teen's Perspective. So I am glad you guys joined me today because we're going to talk about something that I think is so, so important. Your parents think they're extremely important, too. I can tell you that now. Your parents are tired of telling you guys the same thing over and over. Let me tell you, what I hear from parents all the time is they do not want to have to micromanage you guys, all right? So I'm just laying it out there. When they have to tell you like things over and over and over, we call that micromanagement. I have my own practice, so I have a team, and I do not like micromanaging. I like for people to just do what they know they can do. I should just be able to say, hey, you know your job, you know what you're doing. I shouldn't have to be like, hey, don't forget to do this, don't forget to do that. Because all of us on this call can make a schedule, we can all write notes, we can do it all, all right? But I will say, it's not you guys' fault, all right? So don't be too hard on yourself. It is not your fault. And I'm gonna tell you why it's not your fault. Because the things that you are not doing, things that your parents are constantly telling you to do over and over and over, the reason you're not doing them is because you don't wanna do it. And the reason you don't wanna do it is because it's just not fun, it's either painful or you see no value in it. So if that is the mindset, then of course you wouldn't want to do it. All right, I'm going to give you an example. For me, I really dislike washing dishes. It's just something I don't like doing. I know how to wash dishes, but I don't enjoy it. So, you know, I found that whenever my wife and I first started, you know, before we became husband and wife, we were dating. I always tell her like, hey, I don't like washing dishes. And then she'll come to my house to visit and dishes would be kind of piled up. And then she was like, hey, you're messy. I'm like, no, I am not messy. I'm very clean. So what I did was I started using, and for anybody on this call who like is super earthy and you know you really support the earth, I support the earth. But I'm going to tell you, I bought a bunch of plastic wear. I'm like, listen, I'm not washing dishes again. I have nothing but plastic wear. But then we started dating and we got married. We started living together. And when you're living together, it's like, that's not going to work. Because my wife is like super, super environment, you know, lady. Like, she's like, we're out of recycle. We got to do this. No styrofoam. You know, like plastic. What are, what are you using plastic for? So I had to adapt. And I had to start washing dishes. You know, it was part of the deal, man. I'm telling you one thing. You know, many of you will become older. And you're going to eventually get married. And, you know, just like you had a mom that's on top of you, your spouse is going to be the same way. I'm telling you ahead of time. So get ready. So I had to learn how to do this. So it left me with a choice. I had three options. I could either fight it, which I'm going to tell you ahead of time. All of you guys in relationships, it's not worth it. Don't fight it. Trust me. I could either fight it. I could either do it and be mad or I can learn to like it. So those are my options. And me being the positive life coaching guy that I am, I learned to like it. So my job on this call for you today is I'm going to teach you the secret to motivation. It is something that I believe is so simple once you learn it, but for some reason, it's like a secret because nobody knows how to do this. No one. I mean, no one. So I'm going to teach it to you guys. So in order for me to teach this to you, I need to see some thumbs up. Because I need to make sure people are with me. They're like engaged. They're locked in. I see a couple thumbs up. One, two, three. Perfect. I'm going to teach it to you. So the first thing is this. You have to want the motivation. Okay? I want you guys to tell me. In the chat, I want you guys to tell me the things that you hate doing, that you're forced to do and you don't want to do. Just start typing in the chat. Type it all in the chat. Because I want to see it. All right. Chores. All right. Matt and Kelly said chores. I need specific chores. What do you have here? We say uh, putting away the dishes. Elijah doesn't like it. Who else? Mopping. I don't like mopping either. Taking the garbage out down the street, I think. Math homework. Taking the trash out, cleaning the room, washing dishes, vacuuming, washing my face. Yes, you got to wash the face. Putting away the dishes. Man, the dishes. You guys don't like dishes either. I don't like them either. Let's see. Walking the dog. That's why I don't have a dog. 
feeding the dog. Yep, I don't have one. Summer homework, I don't blame you. Extra work, brushing my teeth. Uh-oh, who said brushing my teeth? Hey, I'm an orthodontist. You can't say that here. You got to love brushing your teeth. All right, so brushing teeth, tests, corrections. <laughs> All right, good. Thank you guys for putting that in there. All right, so I'm going to pick the common one is washing dishes. All right, you guys just lock into the thing that you dislike doing. All right, in order for me to help you become motivated is you first have to say, I want to be motivated at this. You have to make that decision. Remember, you have the three options. You can fight your parents on this. All right, you can fight your parents. You can be like, I'm not doing it. I wouldn't advise it. I'm telling you now, because the parents are quick to take away that phone. They're going to take away your social media, and then you're going to be, like, lonely. I'm telling you. They'll snatch your phone in a second. I mean, I hear it all the time when I'm coaching. Yep, my phone is gone. I'm like, man, I'm telling you guys, the phone is important. So you can fight it. I don't recommend it. Can we all just remove that option off the table? Can we give a thumbs up? Can we remove the option off the table to fight it? All right, I see one, two. All right, that's three, four, and five. All right, perfect. All right, so that's no longer an option. So that leaves us with two options. Two, you can either do it and be mad and grumpy and complaining, moping around where you go slow and just wash the dishes. You can slam the dishes. I wouldn't advise that either. Or, or, or you can learn my secret and you'll just be motivated where it wouldn't even be a fight at all. I mean, it wouldn't even be a struggle. You'll just be like waking up in the morning doing your thing. You'd be like, you know what? Those dishes need to be washed. I'm going to wash them real quick. It just happens naturally because you're motivated to do it. We call it intrinsic motivation. So how many of you will love to learn the secret of motivation so you can wash dishes? (laughs) And just so you know, you can apply this secret to anything. It doesn't have to be just washing dishes. You can apply it to like sports. You know, some of you want to like make straight A's, but you're like, hey, I just don't like school. I'm not really motivated, but I would love the feeling of just being accomplished. When I get to see my report card and it's straight A's and I'm getting all the praise, my parents are saying I'm awesome and the teachers are saying I'm awesome. Some of us want that. And I'm gonna teach it to you. Now, this is a secret, so you can't tell anybody. All right, and anybody gonna learn this, they gotta come to this session first. All right, so don't be sharing my secret. I'm gonna tell it to you. I'm gonna teach it to all you guys. All right, so here we go. So the first thing you have to do is to choose the thing that you want to be motivated about, all right? You have to choose it. So in this case, we're going to say doing the dishes, washing dishes. So all of us are in our mind. We're thinking, I'm going to say washing dishes. You guys say walking the dog and all that. Say, I want to enjoy or I want to be motivated to wash dishes. You guys all say that right now to yourself. You don't have to tell it to me, but I want you to say it mentally. We said it. So everybody knows step number one. You got to say it. I want to be motivated to wash the dishes, walk the dog, do my math homework, brush my teeth, please, brush your teeth. All right, so those are the ones. Number two, before I tell you that, I'm gonna just explain to you why you're not motivated, all right? I think this is very important for you to know why you are not motivated. I want you to know this. And the reason why I want you to know this is because number one, I want you to tell your parents that it's not your fault, technically. It's really not your fault. So your parents don't have to be so mad at you because like, listen, mom, it's out of my control. Until now, because you're going to know. The second is that I don't want you beating yourself up. Because oftentimes, we beat ourselves up. I know all of you who were with me last week learned about the villain. All right? So we all learned about the villain. We each have a villain. All of us. Now, whenever you are going through life, what builds you up is usually like compliments, accomplishments, feeling good. That would build you up. But whenever you fail at anything, it actually beats you down, all right? Now, many of you won't admit this. You'll be like, oh, I don't care about grades. I mean, you say that deep down, but I'm telling you, you do. You may not realize it, but you do. Because what happens is this. Whenever you look at your report card and you see that you have a C, and you may play it cool and be like, okay, not a big deal. I don't care about school anyway, right? But that actually crushes your confidence deep down. It really does. Because you see the C and then your parents come and do like the second blow, right? Because like you just took a dagger to yourself and then your parents come and just throw a bunch of daggers and be like, hey, why you didn't make a C? What are you doing? All this stuff, right? Oftentimes you're like, whatever, whatever, I'm gonna go to my room, all that stuff. But deep down, it hurts, it does. And you have to understand that when it comes to motivation, up until now, it wasn't your fault because you really just didn't know. So I want you all to like forgive yourself And tell yourself that, hey, I'm smart, I'm amazing, all these positive things about yourself, because honestly, you just did not know up until now. You just didn't know. But I will say, after today, you have no excuse, because you know. 
All right, you have zero excuse after today because I'm going to give you a secret to be motivated to do anything. Now, I'm sure most of you are like, hey, I am tired of you talking. Tell me the secret. I'm sure. But hey, I like to talk. Can't help it. All right, but I'm going to tell you the secret. The reason why you're not motivated is because the way you think about it. It's that simple. It's the way you think about it. So I'm going to give you an example. So I'm going to tell you my story. My wife and I could get married. Everything's great. Honeymoon time. We went to Hawaii, to Maui. Come back. We move in. Everything is great. A week go by, two weeks by, you know, everything's great. This is wonderful. I love being married. And then the dishes came. All right? The dishes. The dishes started piling up. She's looking at me. I'm looking at her. And we're like, hey, you know, my style is to do the plastic. I'm a plastic guy. You know, so I told her, I said, hey, I'm going to do plastic. And she was like, no, the environment, the environment. I say, like, listen, I promise you, I care about the environment, but I prefer plastics. I don't want to wash the dishes. So then we had to come with a compromise. That's the first thing I learned in marriage. You have to compromise. So I was like, fine, you do the first week, you do the second week, you do the first six months, and then I'm going to do a month. How about that? Didn't happen. No way, not happen. She said, we're taking turns. So I was like, okay. All right. So. I started washing dishes. I washed them. It was painful. It was horrible. And then after three weeks of this, I stopped in my tracks. It's like, wait a minute. Come on now. I am the life coach. I know how to take control of my mind. I know how to condition my mind to do whatever I want my body and my mind to do. I can condition my mind for that. So I'm like, wait a minute. I need to do that with this. So I did it. And the first thing I did is why? Do I not like washing dishes? Because ask myself, is it truly painful? Is it truly horrible? The answer is no, it's not. So my question for you guys is, why don't you like to do the thing you don't like to do? Give it to me in the chat, all right? So why don't you like to wash dishes? Why you don't like feeding your dog? Why you don't like doing math homework? Why you don't like doing extra work? Why you don't like brushing your teeth in the morning? What else we have? Why you do not like washing your face or vacuuming or cleaning your room, taking out the trash? Why, why, why? Tell it to me. Let's see. Samaya so says, a lot of effort. Mark says, because I'm lazy, I'm going to stop you there, Mark. No, you are not lazy. I just told you that, but I'm going to tell you again. Hold on. Let me look to read the rest. You guys are coming in fast. It's boring. I like it, Mason. Yes, it's boring. Kelly said, the dog is annoying, and I never wanted the dog. <laughs> that is so funny. I feel you because I don't have any animals either because it has to be done every day. Elijah's like, it's every day. Come on now. Daniel says, math is frustrating. It's boring. I don't enjoy it because it's an inconvenience, because I want more free time. Thank you guys for that. So, Mark, I'm not going to let you slide with the lazy because you're not lazy. You're just a person who enjoy doing certain things. And I guarantee you, you're not lazy when it comes to the things you enjoy doing, right? So that's for everyone. So I'm asking you that. This is pure logic. I want you guys to just go logic mode on me, okay? Everybody go logic mode. Logic means one plus one is two. All right, go logic. Let's say, for instance, you feel like this is boring. This is a waste of time. It's inconvenience. It's frustrating. Why would you do it then? Right? That's logic. If you think of something as boring and horrible and not fun, of course you wouldn't want to do it. Of course you wouldn't be motivated to do it. It's like basic. It's logic. Does that make sense? Thumbs up, that makes sense. If I ask all of you right now, man, I want everybody to go take a scoop of dirt. I want you to chew the dirt. How many would do it? Nobody. Why? Because you'd be like, that is yucky. Why would I do that? It's called logic. It's very basic. One plus one equals two. That makes sense, guys? So now you know why you don't like doing it. That was probably so simple that it went over a few of you guys' head. All right? So I'm going to explain that again. If you think about X, whatever X is, you guys remember in school, X is washing dishes, studying, and all that other stuff. If you think X is boring, you're not going to be naturally wanting to do X. Can we all agree with that? Now, when we think of video games, we think video games are fun. So guess what? We naturally want to play video games. Oh, I'm going to give you guys even a better one. We think our phones are enjoyable because it connects with our friends. So we naturally get on our phone. But I guarantee you, if every time you touch the phone, it burns your hand, you would not be using your phone. I can promise you that. If every time you touch the phone, it was like a hot iron, you would not use your phone. Why? Because it's painful. Of course you don't want to experience pain. So this is what I call logic. 
So, oven mitts. I like it, Alexis. Man, Alexis is sharp. She's like, sure, get some oven mitts. She's getting on that phone. All right, I don't blame you. So, if we're going to follow this logic pattern, imagine if you could then take the same mindset you have with video games and phones and hanging out with your friends and swimming and going on vacations. Imagine if you can place that same thought on the dishes, on feeding the dog, on washing the dog and brushing your teeth. Does that make sense? The answer is so simple to be motivated. If you think something is going to be fun and enjoyable, you're going to naturally do it. You don't have to force yourself to do it. You just naturally do it. Just the way whenever you're hungry, you just naturally eat, right? You just naturally eat. It's so simple. So really the question becomes, how do you do that? All right, because I'm sure for me, it was a lie. At first, I did not enjoy doing dishes, all right? So then the answer is, I have to start thinking of dishes as fun. Because I'm going to teach you guys something about human nature. And I studied this because I want to know why you guys do the things you do, all right? All of you guys are humans. So therefore, this is what you do. There's a natural tendency. This is all natural for you to move towards pleasure and run from pain, whatever it is. So if you think of school as straight A's, I make A's and then I get gifts and I get praise. That's pleasurable in my mind, right? You know, we have hormones like dopamine. It's like this feel good hormone. That's pleasurable in my mind. I'm going to want to do that. So that's why you see some kids in your class who are just all over it. I mean, they're all over studying. They're studying all day. You know why? Because in their mind, they think studying equals A's and that is pleasurable. All right. Now, naturally, we all move from pain. Anything we associate as painful, we're not going to want to do it. So, you know, brushing your teeth, somebody may think it's painful. Now, obviously, it's not physical pain. Some things are physical, but I'm saying physical pain, mental pain. It's like brushing my teeth. Oh, have you guys ever done that? Like, oh, that means it's painful. All right. That's a painful face. Hey, guys, I want you to go take the trash out. Pain. In your mind, you have conditioned your brain to associate taking the trash is painful. Is this making sense? Give me thumbs up if it's making sense. I don't want to lose anybody here. All right. Hey, Cassidy, I see you joining us. All right. So it's all making sense. I know that I'm going to do getting not. <laughs> uh, yeah, Alexa says she doesn't do it. She's getting in trouble. And that's going to be some real pain. So the answer is very simple. The secret, write it down. The secret to motivation. And I want you guys to use this secret for everything. I want you to use it for taking the dog out. I want you to use it for your school. I want you to use it for sports. If you want to run like a mile every day and you don't feel like it, but you know it's going to help you to be better. Anything you want to do, I want you guys to lock this down right now. Here we go. The secret to motivation is changing how you think about that thing, whatever that thing is. All you have to do is just change the way you think about it. It's simple. Change it because your mind and your body will naturally, 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 naturally do the things that are enjoyable to you. So if you attach brushing your teeth or walking your dog as something that's pleasurable, you would naturally move to it. Or in Alexis' case, if you were to think about not walking the dog as painful, you're going to naturally want to walk the dog, all right? But I prefer you guys to choose the things that are enjoyable and not really worry about pain for now, all right? Let's worry about the pleasure. All right, so two Ps. We're going to worry about pleasure. All right, so I'm going to teach you how to change the way you think because we know that's the answer. All right, here we go. The way I'm explaining this to you is I'm going to tell you my story about when I became a vegetarian. I wanted to eat salad. So this is the thing. So before I became a vegetarian, I was a meat eater. And I used to tell myself, and I told everyone, if there's no meat on the plate, it's not a meal. That was my thing. I'm like, it needs to be meat. And I had a bet one day. One of my friends, he knows I'm competitive. He's like, listen, I bet you cannot go a week without eating meat. So I took the bet. And I took the bet. And dinner time came. So I'm looking at my plate. And my wife was like, hey, it's made chicken. I'm like, oh, I forgot to tell you. I actually took a bet and I can't eat the chicken. It's like, what? It's like, okay, more for me. So I had to like be there. And it was painful, all right? It was painful. So the first day, it was a struggle. I was so close to just eating the chicken and just lying and said I didn't do it, but I had, you know, ethics is important, so I didn't do it. So then the second day, I'm like, you know what? I'm not doing this. 
I'm going to condition my mind to love salad. I'm a life coach. I ain't know how to do this stuff. I'm teaching people how to condition their mind every single day so I can do it to myself. So I did it. And I'm going to tell you how I did it because this is how you're going to do it. All right. First, I started to think differently. All right. Write that down. You have to think differently. You have to think differently. That's what's important. You got to think differently. It's always going to work. So the way I was thinking differently is this. Before, I thought a meal needs meat. Salad is disgusting. That's what I used to think before. And I believed it because that's my natural tendency. I was naturally motivated to not eat salads. So then I said, okay, I'm going to think differently. Thoughts, you know, mind, listen to me. I'm going to tell you something, mind. I need you to listen. I like salad. Did you hear that, mind? And this is what you have to do. You have to talk to your mind. You have to talk. Use your words. Talk. Because how many of you know that your mind is in control 95% of the time. Your mind is in control 95% of the time. So that means is this, you had all these years of programming. So right now, a lot of you guys are young, you're teenagers. So you probably have your views about life and politics from your parents, most likely. Because a lot of you, whether the election, whether it's a Republican or a Democrat, It doesn't matter for you because it really won't change your life drastically. But your parents, you've heard your parents say, oh, yeah, we believe this. And another parent was like, yes, this is how I believe. And over the years, your mind have been conditioned. So now you believe it. You believe it. Naturally, you believe it. Just natural. It's okay. But I'm telling you, you also condition your mind to believe other things. Some of you, unfortunately, have conditioned your mind to believe that you're not smart. You know, we use this school system, these grades, which is only designed to test a certain aspect of intelligence. And we put so much pressure on that where somebody doesn't do well, you're like, hey, you're not smart. But that's not the case at all. But you believe it, all right? You've been conditioned to believe that. But the good news is this. Your mind is in control of everything 95% of the time. How much is left? Who knows math? 95% of the time, your mind is in control who knows that you, there's another percent? Can you give it to me? How? Yes, Matt and Kelly, 5% is left. So 5% of your life, you are in control. 5%, and researchers have done the studies on all this, all right? Now, if you meditate, if some of you guys are into meditation, it's been believed that you actually are in control a little more, maybe 8%, 9%, even 10%. I would say some of the monks who like lock themselves in caves and meditate like all day and night, they're probably like 20%. But ultimately, the mind is going to win. I'm going to tell you ahead of time. But you have 5%, most of you guys are 5% of the time, you can influence your mind. You can program the mind. So that's what I did. So I said, mind, you like salad. I told my mind, you like salad. And my mind listened, because it has to listen to me, 5% of the time. And then I went along my day, and then dinner time came. And I'm like, okay, all right, salad time. My wife made me salad. And my heart dropped. I'm like, I don't want to do this. While I'm doing this, I felt the pain. My mind didn't listen. Because my mind says, listen, RJ, you have told me for the past, I'm not going to tell you how old I am or how old I was at the time, but let's say 15 years or 20. So the past 20 years, you told me you hate salad. I am not going to listen to you tell me one time, okay? Because that would be ludicrous. No, you know, that's like me saying, I am scared of bears, which I truly am, because I'm a hiker and I'm really scared of bears. Imagine if one day I says, mind, I'm no longer scared of bears. And then my mind says, okay, RJ. And I see a bear. I'm like, hey, guys, it's a friendly bear. I'm going to go pet the bear. Imagine that happened. Probably wouldn't be here anymore telling you about this. All right. So it's good that our mind will not listen to us. Our mind is there to protect us. It wants to keep us alive. Mind over matter. I like it, Mark. The mind is there to protect us. So if you believe that, give me thumbs up. Your mind is there for to protect you. Thumbs up. I just want to make sure you guys are still with me. Thumbs up, thumbs up. I see two. I see three. I need two more. Two more. There's four and there's five. All right, we'll keep going. So I told my mind a second time. I said, mind, this is painful. I want some meat, but please listen to me. I like salad, mind. And guess what? It didn't work. So what I realized is that I have to give it a little more. I can't just say it one time. I can't just be like, hey, mind. I like salad. I got to do more than that. So I went to the next level. So what I did was every time, even before I started to eat, every time I thought about food, I thought about salad. And I says, salad is good. That's what I told myself. I say, mine, 
salad is good. And this is before I'm eating. And then, you know, I'm going through my day and I'm at work and I'm like, oh yeah, I got to eat. Hey, mind, salad is good. It's so good, mind. Salad is amazing. So I added some extra stuff. And then it's time for dinner time. I'm like, please work, please work, please work. So I sit down, my wife has this big salad. And I'm looking at the salad. Didn't work. It's like, oh, I'm going to eat this again. All right, so then I woke up the next morning. I'm like, okay, I got to conquer the mind. So I'm not only going to just say I like salad. When I see salad, I'm not going to say I like salad. I'm going to go through every sense that I know and really convince my mind I like salad. So when I used to think about salad for that day, I started thinking about salad. I say, mmm, salad is so good. Man, it's good. And then I'm going through the day and it's like, ooh, lunchtime's coming up. Yes, salad is good. I want salad. And I started telling people this. I started using my words and started telling other people. I said, guess what? I can't wait for salad. I want salad. I want salad. And then I got the salad and I started smelling the salad. I was like, ooh, the salad is so delicious. It's delicious. And guess what happened? After seven days, the salad wasn't my favorite, but it wasn't all that bad. After seven more days, so this two weeks, the salad was actually pretty good. I still missed the meat, but the salad was pretty good. After three weeks, guess what? The salad took the rain. I love salad. And to this day, that was years ago, salad is my favorite of all. I love salad. I literally get excited about salads. So in order for you to be motivated, you have to change the way you think about whatever that thing was. I did the same thing for dishes, all right? I did the same thing. I'm like, hey, Fran, you know, my wife's name is Francis. I say, Fran, is it my day to do the dishes? And she say, nope, it's my day. I'm like, oh, man, I want to do the dishes. Hey, let's do them together. And then I started thinking positive about doing the dishes. We started singing. We started listening to music. We started talking. So it was our dish time. And today we still do it together, right? So now it's a natural motivation. I see dishes and I don't be like, ah. Oh, I'm like, oh, cool. This is our time to talk. Or this is my time to listen to music. Or this is my time to watch the game because I'm a huge LeBron James fan. Two nights ago when they was crushing the Houston Rockets, I was so excited. So that is how you become motivated. That's right, Lexus. You know, you, you, you never know where this is going to take you when you change the way you think. So for washing the dog, for brushing your teeth, for washing your face, that is truly the secret to motivation. Just change the way you think. And it's going to take time. It would take a total of 21 days to completely change your mind. But after seven days, you're going to notice it's not so painful. So that is a job. So first, give me some questions. What questions do you guys have? Because this works for anything. This works for math. This works for school. This works for chores. This works for anything you can think of if you just start to change the way you think. Now, what do you think is the advantage of this? So say, for instance, you master this and you master this for chores. What else could you use this for? Think about it. The sky is the limit. You could use this for yourself, right? Some of us struggle with self-doubt. Some of us struggle with villains, you know, telling us that we're not good enough. Imagine if you changed the way you thought about yourself. Imagine you thought about yourself like, hey, I'm amazing. I'm special. I'm unique. I mean, I could do anything that I set my mind to do. I can do it. I'm smart. I'm intelligent. Imagine if you convinced your mind to believe that what would happen. Yes, you can use it for money. All right, so what questions do you guys have for me? I need questions because I need you guys to become this motivated teenager. You have to be motivated. And motivation comes from how you think, however you're thinking about it. And the beautiful thing that you guys just learned today is that although the mind is in control 95% of the time, so that means everything you have conditioned your mind to believe until now, all like 12 years, 13 years, however old you guys are, All these years, you have conditioned your mind to think a certain way. You did the same thing I did, right? You just did it over time. So I'm going to give you an example. If someone leaves you on red, I'm sure you guys all have experienced that. You know, you're snapping your friends. They read it and they didn't respond. Many of you have conditioned your mind to believe they don't like me. They're not my real friends. Something's wrong with me. I'm awkward. I'm not cool. So I'm awkward and all that stuff. That's what you have conditioned your mind to believe. So today, if somebody leaves you on red, it's a natural feeling. You start getting down. So guess what now? You know the secret to changing the way you think. You have to commit to it. The way you would commit to working out, the way you commit to running a marathon, a plan of sport, you work out, you work out, you work out, you have to do the same thing. All right, now I'm going to go to the questions. I'm going to start off with the first question from my friend, Neil. He said, 
How do I keep the motivation going? Guess what? The beautiful thing about this thing is this. Listen, this is so cool. If you have to force yourself to do it, it means you're not motivated and you didn't fully condition your mind because guess what happens? Once you fully condition your mind, it's going to happen so naturally. You don't have to do it. You don't have to force yourself to do it. I never have to be like, ah, all right, RJ, eat salad, eat salad. I don't have to do it at all. I don't have to convince myself to wash dishes. I just do it. It's not that big of a deal. It just happens naturally. All right? The same way you don't have to convince yourself to play video games. So if you're like, hey, I'm having trouble keeping myself motivated. No, no, no. You need to focus and spend more time on conditioning your mind. Conditioning your mind. My friend Mason, based on the thought you're trying to change, it can take longer than three weeks. That's absolutely right, Mason. You're absolutely right. So three weeks is basically a goal. For most of you guys, it's been proven that we can create habits within like 21 to 22 days. So aim for the three weeks. But yeah, if it's a deep-rooted belief about yourself that you're trying to change, it may take longer. But the key is to keep it going. Every time you're 5%, you're in that moment where you can start speaking to your mind. You got to tell the mind that. Like for me, that's the same thing I did with salad. You know, I just kept telling my mind, hey, salad is amazing. It's so delicious. And of course, when you first say you're not going to believe it. And of course, you're going to feel awkward, but who cares about feeling awkward, <laughs> right? I'm not saying you have to do this in front of a group of people, right? You could do this at home. What I'm saying is this is how you change your mind because you don't want to have to spend your life forcing yourself, like grabbing yourself and forcing yourself to do things because it's not fun. It's really not. You know, you want to be able to naturally do things because it helps for success. You know, I've created two businesses from scratch, from zilch, zero, zero up to pass a million dollars. Each one. How? Because I'm extremely motivated because I condition my mind so that I can get the things that I want. I didn't enjoy everything in my business. When I first started as an orthodontist, I hated sterilization. I hated doing the whole things and taking the instruments out. Once again, it was programmed with dishes, I guess. And I conditioned my mind to love doing it. I conditioned my mind to love doing a lot of things. Uh, Reading is one of those things. When I was your age, I hated reading. Absolutely hated reading. But I'm like, wait a minute. If I'm going to be successful, all these other millionaires that I know and billionaires, they read. So guess what? I need to like to read. So I did the same thing. I'll pick up a book. I cannot wait to learn about this book. Man, this book is so interesting. I'm reading it. I'm reading the pages. My mind is wondering. And I'm like, oh, this is so interesting. So interesting. Oh yeah, I love this. I started just telling people, hey, guess what? I love reading. Completely lying at the time. I did not like reading, but I knew that I would like it. So I was like, I'm a reader, guys. Oh yeah, what's your favorite thing to do? Read and wash dishes and eat salad, you know? I just started saying all these things, right? Because that's what happens is that's how you program your mind. You think it, you speak it, you hear it. You got to keep doing this. You got to keep staying relentless at this. All right, next one. How long do you think it would take to fully condition to change the way you think about things? I'm going to tell you, Mark, if you could commit to this, 21 days, buddy. 21 days, that's it. And I don't want you to think for you guys who think that's a long time. It's not a hard 21 days. It's really a hard seven days. Because something happened at day seven. After you've done this consistently for seven days, it becomes less painful. It's just not like, you know, mentally painful. And it gives you the encouragement to keep going. All right. So good job on that. Have you ever gotten back into a negative mind? Nope. Have never done it ever, 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 ever. That's what I'm trying to tell you. The only way it's possible to go back into a negative mindset is if I start telling myself the opposite, right? Like say, for instance, I go wash dishes and then I break the dishes. And then say, for instance, my wife and I get in an argument. And then say, for instance, the sink stops or something and the dishwasher's messed up and all that. And I start telling myself secretly, a lot of times you guys don't know the things that you're saying to yourself, right? It just happens so quickly. And I start telling myself, I hate this. I just cut my hand. We're arguing. Every time I do the dishes, something is broken. If I say this for seven days, guess what? Then it's going to be like, I don't really like doing the dishes. So that's the thing. You have to pay attention to what you're telling yourself the 5% of the time. So good question. Let us say that I didn't want to wake up at 6 a.m. When the time comes, I'm like, not today. I can go to sleep for another hour. Oh, this is great. Because you know what? Waking up is actually an easier one, believe it or not, than a lot of this. Because guess what waking up is? Waking up is just doing it, to be honest. The waking up thing is pretty easy. Because I was the same way. I read a lot of books about millionaires and billionaires. And all of them wake up early. And they read and they meditate. So I'm like, listen, if that's what they do, I want to do the same thing, right? So I started waking up early and it's literally just setting your alarm and waking up. At some point, you have to tell your mind who's in control. You have to do it, honestly, because I know the mind takes control 95% of the time. But listen, I still have 5% and ultimately I'm still the one who's over my mind. 
at the end of the day. Think about this. I know this may be confusing, but seriously, you are separate from your mind. You're not your thoughts. I hope you guys know that. You're not. You're the one making the decisions. You're the one making the decision today to say, listen, I'm going to be a motivated child. I'm going to be a motivated teenager. So I'm going to do the things that RJ is telling me to do because I'm going to be the motivated teenager. Now, at some point, you're going to have to just take your mind and just smack it. Just do that to your mind and say, listen, I am in control. All right. And I'm going to tell you what I do just for you guys. And I'm not encouraging you guys to do what I do. But I'm going to tell you what I do. I do a couple things. But there's something I do every winter. Every winter, which I'm getting excited for now, is I do cold water plunges. So in my swimming pool, around cold times of the year in Austin, the swimming pool, I have a temperature. It gets down to 40 degrees. All right. So it's 40 degrees. It's 30 degrees outside. 40 degrees. Guess what I do? I jump in there. That's it. I just jump in and stay in there. It's about like 13 minutes because after, you know, 15 minutes, it's starting to get sketchy about, you know, hypothermia and all that. So uh, I stay 13 minutes. Now, do you think I want to do that? No, I do not. Is it painful? Extremely. Can I condition my mind to enjoy it? Kind of, but I can't, to be honest, because it's not long enough, right? Because it's like just a winter and the winter's over and then Austin sometimes is warm. It's painful, to be honest. It really is. It's just painful. And I do cold water showers. That's even more painful than a cold water plunge. They're painful. They hurt. But guess what I'm doing when I do that? Why do I do that? Because I'm taking my mind and I'm telling my mind who's in control. Because I get in there and my mind is like, get out, get out, get out. It's cold. Get out. And guess what I do? I say, nope. That's all I do. That's simple. One word. I just get in there. I'm like, nope, not happening. Who's in control? I am. And I do that because I want to reinforce to my mind that I am in control. So you're right. For this person who says the six o'clock wake up time. Yes, of course, your mind is going to say, go back to sleep. You have another hour. But guess what you do? You say, wait a minute, mind. Who's in control, buddy? I'm in control. So guess what? We're getting up and we get up. That's what. And honestly, that is called conditioning. If you want your mind to listen to you and you tell your mind what you want it to do, that's called conditioning. And that's what I'm encouraging you guys to do with this motivation. So great question, my friend. All right. So I am a life coach who specializes in confidence and I love mind conditioning. So I'm sharing with you guys one way that you can condition the mind. There's so many different ways to be honest. There's so many. So Samaya actually mentioned that she has an effective way of waking up early. So do you want to share it, Samaya? Yeah, sure. It's actually pretty simple and it only really needs three alarms and a very small amount of math. So you have your target for when you want to wake up, say seven. So you have to set an alarm at 630, 30 minutes before you want to wake up. And after you wake up, you have to turn off your alarm, obviously, but you can go back to sleep for 15 minutes. And then you set another alarm for that 15 minutes. So 645, and then you set that alarm and you wake up after that 15 minutes of sleep. And then you can like go on your phone or read a book and do whatever you want until seven o'clock. And then once it's seven, you have to get out of bed and, you know, start with your day. And then, yeah. Good job, Samaya. Give me a high five. If you're on camera, give somebody a high five. If you're on camera, give her a high five. There we go. Where's the high five? There we go. Thank you. Thank you. Great job. So you're right. There's so many ways to do this. Now, obviously, I've been doing this for so long. So my approach, I, I'm like, you get in it. But I actually like Samaya's approach. It's like, hey, yeah, you can go back to sleep, set alarm, so it all works. So good job. All right, let's see the win hot method. But I find it brutal. Neil, you want to share it? You want to share that method? Uh, my dad says to like, you do like cold showers, but like, I don't like cold showers. Oh, okay. So you don't like cold showers. Okay. So what Neil is saying is, hey, RJ, the cold shower may work for you, but I don't like cold showers. So I'm going to try something different. And it works. Because remember, the key is not the water. The water is not what's conditioning your mind. It's you telling your mind or showing your mind who's in control. All right. So that's the key. You want to show your mind who's in control. And I do it multiple ways. I do it with cold water plunges. I fast. So I think, I think fasting is a great way of doing that because then there's a natural tendency to want to eat, obviously. So I fast. Not an everyday thing by any means. But also something we do is a cold shower is a big one. Um, so Zion says, why do people take cold showers? So there have been proven a lot of health benefits for cold showers, like it improves your immune system. 
But the reason why I do it is because I want to condition my mind. I want to let my mind know who's in control. So I do it for different reasons. But I think another way you guys can do this is meditation. Meditation is another way. It may sound weird and all that because when I first heard of meditation, I thought it was weird too. But I do it because once again, you're conditioning the mind. When you're meditating, you're literally just being still. You're focusing on your breath. And there's so many different ways to meditate, but that's one way. It's to focus on your breathing. All right? You just breathe. That's hard to do. So your mind wanders. You don't want to do it. You want to think about something else. So you condition your mind to do it. You just do it and condition your mind. All right? You know, before now, you had an excuse of why you were not motivated. All right? You had an excuse. Mom, you know, I didn't take out the trash because I just don't want to do it. Now you have no excuse anymore because I'm actually going to tell all your parents that you learned this and there should be no more excuse. No, I'm joking. I'm not going to do that. Hey, remember, I'm a life coach. I'm a teen life coach. I'm your advocate. I'm on your side. All right? I fight against the parents because I'm on your side. So the key is from today on, I want you guys to start conditioning your mind. So I need everyone to make a commitment right now in the chat. Tell me, what are you going to condition your mind so that you could be motivated to do starting today? Everyone tell me. I want everybody on the computer and type it. Everybody, study, working. Okay, perfect. You want to enjoy studying? I like you to read. Homework, Taylor. Homework. Daniel says math. Hope says homework. Walking my dogs, Mark, online school, Elijah, homework, 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 starting like chores, convincing my mind homework isn't bad as I see it, as it now, yes, extra work, Zion, school, says Leah, Cassidy, what are you doing? Meditation, I like it, beach family, meditation, cool, taking time off my phone, I like it, Mark, all right, thank you guys for your time, this will work, trust me, it will work, so you guys just need to make a commitment. Before I let you go, someone may ask the question. How do I remember to condition my mind, right? Because you know you need to, but how are you going to remember? The simplest way, set alarms. Just set an alarm on your phone, like every hour, just say condition your mind. That's what I did at the very beginning. I was like, oh yeah, condition my mind. I like homework. Homework is fun. Homework, another thing you guys can do, and we'll talk about this because there's a part two of this next time. So remember, set an alarm and say, I like homework. Homework is fun. Start telling it. Remember, you speak it. You think it and you speak it. Homework is great. It's fun. Hey, mom, I can't wait to do homework. You guys got it? Cool. See you guys later. High five. I'm going to see you next week. I hope you enjoy listening to the group coaching session. And I also hope that you are able to learn something that would help strengthen the relationship between you and your teenager. Until next time, this is a teen's perspective helping parents see the future.